We have a system that increasingly taxes work and subsidizes non-work. Basic income, also called Universal Basic Income UBI, is a public governmental program for a periodic payment delivered to all citizens of a given population without a means test or work requirement. Basic income can be implemented nationally, regionally, or locally, and is an unconditional income sufficient to meet a person's basic needs, i.e., at or above the poverty line. According to a new study by the left-leaning Roosevelt Institute, a universal basic income could permanently make U.S. economy trillions of dollars larger. While such socialistic policies sound great in theory, history, and data, show it isn't the economic savior it is touted to be. Here's what UBI does, it buys time. It placates the seething masses for a little while longer. Every economic and financial policy initiative since 2008 at least has had only that one purpose, to kick the can down the road, to keep the zombie economy lurching forward one more stuttering step at a time. All these measures including UBI and QE and all the rest could never work for long, and implementing them only caused the underlying economic and financial rot to spread faster. They know that. UBI is one of the last tricks they'll pull out of the bag before the onset of chaos tears the world apart getting closer and closer. We crossed a line that should have never been crossed when we sent stimulus payments directly to the American people during the very early stages of the pandemic. Even many Republicans that supported the measure acknowledged that what they were doing was pure socialism, but they defended the payments by insisting that we were in the middle of a major national emergency. At the time, I warned that once the government started issuing such checks, the American people would always keep demanding more. When it was announced that the latest round of stimulus payments would only be $600 per person, angry activists vandalized Nancy Pelosi's house. Of course they got Mitch McConnell's house too. In both cases, the vandals made it exceedingly clear that they wanted more government money. Sadly, it wasn't just a handful of activists that went ballistic. Literally millions of enraged Americans posted angry messages on social media that expressed how, insulting, the $600 figure was. But prior to this pandemic, the US government had never sent out, universal basic income, checks in the entire history of our country. So you would think that most people should be grateful for an extra $600, but instead there was a tremendous amount of rage. President Trump wanted the payments raised to $2,000 and many Democrats did as well. But Republicans still had control of the Senate, and Mitch McConnell initially blocked that effort. But now Democrats will shortly have control of the White House, the Senate and the House of Representatives, and one of the first things they plan to do is to deliver $2,000 checks to the American people. Even while $600 stimulus checks are being deposited in tens of millions of bank accounts, congressional Democrats are laying the groundwork for even greater stimulus payments, which some call, survival checks. As Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer DNY, recently said, one of the first things that I want to do when our new senators are seated is deliver the $2,000 checks to the American families. With Democrats preparing to take power in Washington, a critical question will be whether such survival checks will be one-time payments or recur each month, for the duration of the pandemic, as Senator Ed Markey DMA and others have suggested. That may pacify the socialist mobs for a month or two, but eventually they will be back for even more payments. As the voices get angrier and angrier, do you think that anyone in Washington will be willing to stand up and say no? The incoming vice president, Kamala Harris, previously proposed giving out monthly $2,000 checks for the duration of this pandemic. Recurring monthly $2,000 checks would mirror the payments proposed in the Monthly Economic Crisis Support Act, that Vice President-elect Kamala Harris DCA, introduced in the Senate in May 2020. If you are married with three kids, you would have gotten $10,000 every month under her plan. Considering where we are as a society today, I think that most Americans would have been very eager to sign up for that. Of course the price tag for such a plan would be nightmarish. It would have been approximately $600 billion every month and that would mean that it would add more than $7 trillion to our national debt over the course of an entire year. But since we are liquidating the republic anyway, who really cares? Harris insisted that her plan would end once the crisis was over. Other politicians, however, are ready to start giving citizens, universal basic income, checks on a permanent basis starting right now. 
For example, Andrew Yang is making this the signature promise of his campaign as he runs for mayor of New York City. Former 2020 Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang has officially started his run to succeed Bill de Blasio as mayor of New York City with a call for a universal basic income for half a million of the city's poorest residents. Yang insists that by giving everyone free money every month he can eradicate poverty in NYC. We can eradicate extreme poverty in New York City, Yang said. If you put just a little money in their hands it can actually be what keeps them in their home and, again, avoids them hitting city services that are incredibly expensive. That sounds good, but who is he going to tax in order to pay for it? After all, hundreds of thousands of wealthy people already left the city during 2020. The truth is that it is a pipe dream, but that pipe dream is going to win him a whole lot of votes. Benjamin Franklin once made the following statement. When the people find that they can vote themselves money that will herald the end of the republic. Sadly, we have now reached that point. And this comes at a time when tens of millions of Americans are in desperate need because the real economy continues to implode all around us. For example, we just learned that Christopher and Banks has gone belly up. Apparel retailer Christopher and Banks, which caters to women over 40, is the latest clothing chain to file for bankruptcy protection amid the pandemic. The Minneapolis-based company announced Thursday it filed for Chapter 11 in the United States Bankruptcy Court for the District of New Jersey. Christopher and Banks said in a news release it expects to close a significant portion, if not all, of its brick-and-mortar stores. Thousands of businesses have been dying every month. As I discussed the other day, the US has lost more than 110,000 restaurants alone. And to make sure that most of the businesses that have died can never possibly make a comeback, Joe Biden wants to institute a national minimum wage of $15 an hour. Promising people more money is a great way to win elections, but at the end of the day someone always has to pay. As the US economy continues to come apart at the seams, finding sources of tax revenue will become increasingly difficult. Perhaps the big tech companies can step up and offer to dramatically enlarge their contributions to the US Treasury. After all, they were quite instrumental in giving control of the federal government to the Democrats, and so you would think they should be quite willing to help pay for their promises. It would be a lot easier to make an argument against UBI if we hadn't already dropped tens of trillions of dollars on Wall Street over the last two decades. We dished out over $13 trillion just during the 2008 bailout alone, according to Nomi Prince, it takes a pillage. Unfortunately, as of now either we end up giving a lot of trillions to the proles, or the proles are going to tear this country apart. Gosh, wasn't handing trillions and trillions of dollars to billionaires just the best idea ever? This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. And thanks for your valuable feedback. Stay safe and healthy friends.